Um, the crowd tonight, uh, it's here. Uh, weather's not real good, uh, but hopefully we do get some rain or snow or whatever is moving in uh, with that. Uh, moving down to 1.2, approval of the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda Mr. that was President. presented on board docs? Mr. President, I would like to move that we uh, add a discussion on superintendent evaluation. Are you making a motion? As I move. Okay. That's what, that's what I ask. Uh, do I have a second? I have a motion and a second to add to the agenda. How did you state that? The superintendent evaluation. And this is going to go along with Would that the, be an executive session? Uh, no, this is policy so and procedures. But, but I thought we were approving the agenda. Kay. Right. He wants to add her. I want to add to oh, the agenda. Oh, add that yeah. into the agenda. Okay, I have a motion and a second to add it to the agenda. Oh, Any further discussion? Mr. President, um, I'd just like some more information about the, the procedures. Uh, we, happen I know the, as a board... Uh, we uh, gave me a uh, consensus f several meetings ago that we were following the procedure that I talked to laid out during a previous board meeting. So I have already sent out to you and the rest of the board uh, the procedure that we had consensus on. So that is the procedure we're using. Um, I'd just like some more clarification. Would you Did you have discussion with the president with the superintendent we have discussed we had a pre-agenda meeting so on it on that tuesday you sent it to I, us on tuesday i argue this, this is an this is a I, motion I, to add an item to the agenda right. and this, this is not discussion. the actual discussion okay is there any further discussion i have some discussion okay i would i looked up the evaluation of the superintendent and our board policy cei and it's it's got on here the superintendent's performance evaluation shall be based on the following and it's got one responsibilities defined by the superintendent's job description which i'm which sure we have excuse now me is this on the subject of approving the agenda this, this, this is about the meeting this isn't yes about let us please but move I, forward we cannot I move forward the, until we but have but the agenda question approved. Is number two the board superintendent developed performance goals and objectives and i can't find any of that and it says Mr. President, I would like to call for a vote to add this item to the agenda. Information two weeks prior to filling out the evaluation, and we don't have that. I I will I will call for a vote on uh, Board Member Park's motion uh, at this time. All in favor of putting the procedures for the superintendent evaluation on the agenda for tonight's meeting, vote yes. Yes. All opposed? Vote no. 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 So Mr. President, I'd like to move that we approve the agenda as was presented. Uh, could we have one board member on uh, Zoom? He, he said no. Well, but your votes aren't registered. No. So, okay. Mr. President, can we have a roll call vote? Please? Okay, let's have a roll call okay. vote. Alan Park, how do you vote? Yes. Park. Craig Pallister, how do you vote? No. No. Lori Hurdle, how do you vote? No. Kurt Weiner? Yes. Ken voted no. Megan, how do you vote? No. Motion failed. Okay. Uh, I have a motion to approve the agenda uh, as presented in board docs previously. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? If not, I call for a vote on approval of the agenda as printed say yes yes yes, yes. no all no. opposed say no no okay the two no's that i have are kurt Biner and alan park everyone else says yes is that correct which is four correct. so the agenda has been approved okay. we don't have contact with amy no she is not able to attend tonight Just so uh, people uh, that are watching tonight, we are having an internet problem that we're not able to 
uh, see a lot of the things that are coming in on board docks tonight. Uh, moving on down, uh, we have the mission of USD 49 is to provide a quality learning experience for every student in every classroom every day. To support the mission of the district, the U USD 49 Board of Education includes supporting a vision that encompasses high student achievement, highly effective staff, high effective and positive communications, and effective management of resources. At this time, uh, I would like to make a motion to approve the consent agenda. I would second that. I have a motion to approve the consent agenda uh, and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, all, of, all in favor of approval of the consent agenda, vote yes. 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 Yeah. All opposed, no. Okay, moving on down to 3.1, public comment. Do I have anyone that wants to address the board tonight? Hearing none, I will not go through all the, uh, yes. Since public comment, I mean, it's okay if I say something. Sure. Okay, um, on personnel transactions, you'll notice that there's a, resin, or a retirement of Guy Ray Boyd from Hayes Middle School. I just wanted to take an opportunity to get you before we got to this point, so I'm sorry. If I, I appreciate but, um, that. But I wanted to make sure to point out the, the great work that she did provided for the district and for the students that she served and their families over the last, I can't remember how many years, 27 years. She's been just a, a, a great, great um, person. She'd be very hard to replace um, in a misery. I would second that all the way. I worked for, with Di Ray for years, and her support and advocate of kids is just unbelievable and outstanding and her uh, working with the other special ed teachers in the building she was a resource that they all pulled on to and while we're commenting on personnel transactions I was very happy to see that we are rescinding an earlier retirement that the board uh, 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 went ahead and approved uh, on his recommendation he is rescinding his retirement so Dan Ballman we are rescinding his uh, at Hayes High so he will be continuing as a teacher in the broadcast and working tonight broadcasting our board meeting so big thank you to both of them as a parent I just want to say about Dyre she's great support um, she's very supportive and um, makes you feel very comfortable when you um, have a child with special needs. Um, so we're going to miss her a lot. So, um, Dari, if you're listening right now, I want to say thank you so much. Dedication all the way because not only she was she a teacher for 27 years, she drove an hour both ways to be a teacher in our school district. So, <laughs> talking about dedication. Okay, uh, thank you, Kyle, for bringing that up. Okay, uh, district communication, superintendent's report 4.1. Ron? Yeah, um, just wanted to uh, share a few things. Uh, congrats to Lincoln Elementary. Uh, they uh, were, for the last couple of years, been on hard to support for improvement. Uh, through their work and their academic progress that they've done, specifically on the on the actual targeted uh, area, they will uh, no longer be identified as a targeted support for improvement. And I think it's worth sharing and celebrating the work and the effort that those staff members put into that, and they have put in a ton of work into that. So I just want to congrats Lincoln Elementary on that. Also, just this is a quick reminder. I know Shannon talked about that at the last meeting, but uh, we have our KISA accreditation visit uh, coming up this Thursday. This is kind of a big deal um, for our district. Uh, Shannon's put in a tremendous amount of work uh, prior to this Thursday and getting things ready. And this is just the end of our five year accreditation cycle. And uh, I included the, the agenda uh, just so you kind of knew what was going to be happening that day. 
it's, uh, it's an important day for our, for our district. Um, also, just kind of wanted to give a little shout out our eighth virtual school graduation attended last week. Uh, you know, these happen uh, two times a year, but uh, thought it was worth mentioning. There was 13 virtual students that graduated, um, and this was the first graduation that stays virtual, which I thought was kind of cool. But just the stories, uh, you know, we had uh, a graduate who's going into cosmetology. We had a graduate who's going into florist to become a florist. Uh, one is going to become a uh, truck driver, getting a CDL. Uh, I can't remember all of them, but uh, anyway, it's just I think it's always worth mentioning. As long as these happen regularly, but uh, just some great things happening in our age These are kids who have chosen a different path, and for various reasons, and, uh, and it's, it's, uh, they're, they're they're achieving their their goals, and it's, it is uh, such a neat, neat event. So. Just wanted to share. I'll, I'll piggyback on that. I had the opportunity to attend the other night, and you know, uh, I was watching the crowd of the parents and the grandparents and the uncles and the aunts, and you know, it was hard for me to not wipe a tear off the corner of my eye to the excitement and dedication it took for these kids to get through school. And I want to thank Olivia Rice, Sandra Hickert, Melissa Garrison, all from the virtual uh, school because they really put on a program that makes these kids feel special. They definitely do. They definitely do. I uh, just want to talk a little bit. I know most a lot of the board members were at our branding committee meeting uh, on last uh, December 5th, but just uh, kind of a, a follow-up. We I think we had 23 committee members who participated in the meeting. Uh, sub, some subcommittees, two subcommittees have been formed. Uh, right now, what we're waiting on those subcommittees to complete their work. Once those subcommittees have completed their work, uh, they will be meeting with John Jensen um, and. He will, uh, you know, get the feedback from those committees, and then we will plan the next uh, on site with John. Uh, I think those committee meetings will be via Zoom, um, but it's once all the work's done, and then we'll meet Zoom, and then he will be on site to have our second uh, large committee meeting. And so, just wanted to uh, bring everyone up to date there. Yes. Uh I signed up for one of the subcommittees, so they're going to reach out to us and give us the yeah, Zoom date. You, you should get, uh, I think what basically the information you're going to get is once we know that everyone's completed, and I think there'll be some deadlines, uh, there'll be a Zoom Zoom I, call. I don't understand what you mean completed. What Did I have an assignment? or? Well, I think, yeah, I think you did have an assignment. I don't know what you were. Well, I was on the one where is the logo the same in every, yeah, I think on my, asked, just on my own, go look around. And I everything. think he asked that you schedule a time to go to the high school okay. and see okay. all the okay. logos right. or symbols and yeah. then okay. I, as soon as the meeting was over the other day I had to go take a picture oh, of that yeah. I had to take a picture of our uh, alma mater because I didn't remember that uh, one okay. either so I, yeah. I, I think that was the homework assignment <laughs> yeah. and I can't okay. remember what the other assignment the what the committee but anyway uh, if you have questions you can definitely call uh, I think Chrissy is someone that you can contact okay. thank you if you have questions um, just to, we talk a little bit more about our classified staff shortages. We're still continuing that workforce shortage that everyone is seeing. It's not just uh, to our, our district. Uh, we're, as board, just want you to be aware that we're completely providing some bus routes uh, starting here very soon just because we're short on bus drivers. Uh, of course, that extends time on the bus and things like that and earlier pickups and later drop-offs and those kinds of things. Uh, we're still trying to get some <coughs> custodial staff uh, staffed up. We are, I, I don't even know exactly where we're at, um, but we are down. Still some custodians and we still have an, out, some, uh, an outside company who's cleaning two of our elementaries at this point. So, And then uh, right, actually Cooks, we're probably in the best shape. Um, we only have really truly one opening. But, uh, it's, it's hit and miss. You know, we, we anytime we have sickness or things, we're, we're definitely short staffed every day that we do have that. Once again, I'll also talk a little bit about our influenza. Uh, we're just seeing a fairly significant increase in the number of influenza cases going around. Of course, you're hearing that 
Uh, we're seeing that in the schools where we are doing extra cleaning. Uh, that is not typical of what we do every day, but we're adding some of those uh, Clorox 360s that we acquired during the COVID times uh, to just help spray off and hopefully prevent some more spread. And once again, we, we are still offering the influenza and COVID testing for students and staff. And we sent some messages out to everyone. Just feel like we can control the spread a little bit and uh, contain a little bit the numbers that we're dealing with. So, um, also I've included site council minutes, so we need those to look at. Okay, I, can I piggyback on that? I just want to thank all the music teachers I got to attend. I know we have some music concerts this week, and we've had several last week uh, because of a situation. I know uh, visiting with the O'Loughlin principal, they had to cancel theirs uh, for a very good reason, but they said they were going to put on an outstanding uh longer one uh, what they needed to do in the spring to make up for the one they didn't have in the, uh, uh, here at Christmas and you know uh, working with the music teachers for years this is their one or two times to shine through the school year and they put so much work into it so I just want to thank uh, and I'll probably leave somebody out uh, please uh, let me know if I do uh, Matt Romey, Joan Cruel, Jessica Hakoda, uh, Alex Crowley, Jolene Cunningham, Nathan Mark, Gloria Blackwell, Jenna, for, Jenna Confer, uh, and Jessica Hakoda that's all at the different schools because they put so much work in uh, uh, to these music programs and this, they only have one or two times to shine throughout the year. Season. Yeah, <laughs> and it was outstanding. I, I was able to attend the Wilson one this w uh, year, and the music teacher at Wilson is on her 47th year, I believe. I 48. 48. Yeah, I 48. It just seemed like 47. No, yeah. uh, 48 uh, years of teaching uh, music. Okay, uh, Ron. I have a, I have a question. Okay, Mr. yes. For the 489 Foundation and Mr. Brown, will we hear from them or how how that auction went? I'm sure we can get them here. I mean, yeah. I would be interested in yeah. how much we raised. And yeah, I don't know. I don't think that's, I mean, I don't really know exactly. Okay. But we can I would appreciate and knowing how they did. And Alan, are you, you're on the Foundation Committee. Yes. Um, you, we had a meeting scheduled for November, but it was canceled. And so we have one here in December, and so we'll probably get more information about that. So I'm sure that... Could you visit with him and have him uh, get a hold of Ron or Jess no, about attending? Jess is on the committee. It's the first, time so can, it was the first time I ever attended. It, it was a neat deal. It is. A lot of good work, a lot of hard work, and good companies that have been done. Uh, a lot of good things that have come out of those uh, foundation dollars. A lot, of, a lot of volunteers that put in a lot of hours. Okay, uh, moving on down to the action discussion items, 5.1, district capital outlay planning for fi the five-year outlook. Uh, this one uh, gets a little bit complicated, but there's so many important things on our five-year looking uh, how we're going to spend those uh, capital outlay dollars along with the bond issue. So, Ron, would you want to take yeah, us there? Just kind of just what you said, Craig, is that this is just our long-range uh, planning document. Uh, this thing is very fluid. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's just important as we the task that we do each year to kind of look to see where we're at. Um, we're going to start, I'm going to have Chris kind of start off with in terms of just some of our revenue and where we're at. And uh, I'll let Chris, then I'll, I'll jump in here. So. So just a little bit of a <coughs> review. I've got to pull up and get to the four docs. Yeah, it's, it's real slow. slow. It is. Uh, but when, when it gets back, you know, you know, and, and a lot of this front end piece is a little bit new. But just for, uh, as a reminder, when we talk about our capital outlay fund, that's a separate fund from operating expenses. That is, uh, the revenue comes from the capital outlay mill levy, which is eight mills. We are uh, 
there, statutorily, we can only spend that money. Basically, the easiest way to think about it is it's not for consumables. So it has to be has to be long term buildings, um, equipment, equipment upkeep. There are some other things that can certainly be put in there. Maintenance staff salaries can be a part of that. So it's basically everything going into uh, facilities, uh, durable, durable facility things. Uh, Looking at historically, uh, especially our look at our three-year average, our July one cash reserve. So uh, you we, you definitely have to have, especially where we've been as a district with facilities. You definitely need money in the bank in in capital outlay because as you know, if, if, as we know, HVAC systems go out, plumbing goes out, things like that. So you need some money in the bank. We average a three-year average about 2.9 million in there. Uh, each year the mill levy generates on average about 3.5 million so that gives us about almost 6.5 in uh, resources available our three-year average is to spend about 3.5 it goes up and down depending on the projects and, and things like that but that's about that's where we're at for a three-year average so of that three five where's that where's that money actually going out of capital outlay so I've got a, a Five year, three year, and then last year's finals uh, through what we would consider anything buildings and grounds. So that's anything basically that has to do with the facilities and equipment related to that. Also, some debt services. So that would be lease payments for uh, like the uh, early childhood complex and Roosevelt's HVAC. So those debt services are lease payments in the buildings and grounds area. And then you can see through the other uh, object groups where that money is going there. We've also historically set aside a little bit of money for uh, nutrition equipment rotation, so replacing kitchens and freezers and or, uh, ovens and freezers and things like that. You'll notice the last couple of years, so, so we budget 70000 or historically the district had budgeted about 70000 for rotation. Over the last couple of years, because of the changes that were associated with COVID and the all the students getting free lunch. We've had enough of a cash balance in food service fund that we haven't had to spend money out of there. And uh, we'll probably talk about it another time, but uh, Jessica received word that she got another grant, and so it's going to go towards equipment. So it, it helps us. We don't anticipate actually having to spend anything on equipment rotation for nutrition services in the next several years. Uh, Technology is a big expense out of capital outlay, so that's not only the, the devices, but also the back end kinds of things. You'll also see there was some debt service in there too. So that was lease payment for lease payments for Dell and Apple. Over the last couple of years, they had some zero percent and, and extremely low interest. So it made sense on a couple of different purchases to actually lease those through the directly through the companies rather than uh, writing a check for cash for those. Um, those are all coming off this year. Transportation, we budget about 300000 to keep the bus rotation going. And then there's also some things, you know, tires and other equipment, things that go along with that. And then instructional equipment. So that might be desks and uh, blackboards, things like that, thermal goods. So that's where the, the money goes out of capital outlay. Chris, over, I think now, maybe Mr. Wilson. Chris, were those new buses? Uh, were they not in capital? Were they capital out by? Or they yeah. So we spend about three hundred thousand a year is what, uh, what, what we we've gone. Uh, if you remember, though, two years ago, two years ago, we basically bought two buses out of one year, right. and then we didn't buy one last year. So if you're looking at the well, for your average, just looking, we haven't bought one yet on this year. So okay. I'll clarify that later. Thank you. So using some of those three-year averages then, we put, put together uh, the five-year plan for capital outlay. That's going to be really hard to, to read on there. It's nicer the, if you could actually the, pull it down. Is that the next one? Yeah, that's the next one. Set. That is the capital outlay five-year outlook. Okay. I did get on. So if we, if we start, I'll just kind of run across that top row and talk about those and then let Mr. Wilson talk about uh, some of the project things. But we know that we, there are some recurring or almost fixed costs. So if you look across those first two rows, the first one being debt service, it, it uh, lays out for you 
uh, not only the buildings and grounds, but also the technology leases as they come off. So you'll see this year is a uh, big year in lease payments, but they start to fall off so that uh, next year we're down to just Apple, Roosevelt, ECC, and then going forward in FY25, we're down to just ECC and Roosevelt for uh, lease payments. Looking at uh, transportation, talking to Russ, we probably got a year in here where we may not need, uh, may not necessarily need a uh, bus each year. So we're, right now the delivery time, the lead time on a bus is over six months anyway. So even if we order one now, we're not gonna get it until next year. So we're, he's working with the, the bus manufacturing companies to see whether we'll end up paying for one out of next fiscal year, or whether we do it out of this year, and then probably may, may end up Skip it a year then. So we're, we're up. We're rotation. up to replace a bus. Yeah, we're up. We're we're in pretty darn good shape right now, and so you may you may be where in the next two years we'll probably only buy one. Okay. I think That's we're talking the big ones. Talking about a route, yeah. another route bus. Um, yeah. He, when it comes time, he'll come and talk about what he's what he's looking at there. Okay. Um, technology. Uh, this was a big year again because we're paying off the the last year of that Dell, which is the whole, it's the whole back end kind of stuff. Um, the number looks bigger this year too, because if you remember, we did the um, student iPads at HMS. We're still waiting to hear if we get some, some of that, uh, whatever that Esser, was called. It was Esser, wasn't it? Uh, it's not Esser, it's, uh, I keep saying Esser. Oh. Esser fish, it has to do with it's, it's that money. It's it's I don't remember the name. Alphabet's technology. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't have word on that yet. Uh, Food service, like I talked about, we won't spend anything on equipment replacement. Uh, buildings and grounds, we anticipate just on the normal upkeep, uh, about 850 this year, and then structural equipment around 160. You can see, though, as the buildings and grounds, as we go forward, we anticipate those numbers are going to come down because of all the things we're getting taken care of with the bond, so it frees up more money there. Uh, slide down a little bit, and then. Okay, so the. I, the thing is, and I don't know if you even remember, um, I guess you could go back and look. Last year when we, we had this, and we've done it the last several years, uh, we, we basically got to scrub everything off of our five-year uh, planning document, which is unbelievable uh, because of the bond. And so we're starting fresh. Now you think, ah, well, then we'll have everything taken care of. Not so much. Um, so what we've had to do is kind of lay out what we feel like is uh, a plan of, of, of things that we need to address and take care of uh, that were not covered by the bond. So uh, starting with um, Hayes High, Hayes Middle, uh, we're, we, we would like to look at a, a project to turf our football, current football field at Hayes High, which has been the, and that will eventually become the middle school field. Now, the reason we feel like we need to turf it is because starting next year, well, this summer, they will going to be pretty much scrubbing away all of our football practice field and soccer uh, competition field as well as the practice fields uh, through the through the bond construction. So, we will be holding practice and some of our sub varsity competitions and possibly our our varsity competitions for soccer on the exact same field uh, we anticipate that we'll see that field used early morning um, after school in the late at night uh, everyone's just going to have to schedule uh, around each other and everyone understands that's probably the it's going to be the situation for the next two years and so uh, they're all willing to do it because they see the, the rainbow at the end of the tunnel uh, of what's coming. So uh, we're proposing that we turf uh, the football and soccer field just because of the impact and wear. It's just long, a long-term game for our middle school as well, uh, something that they'll get great use out of once the uh, high school is done with it. Of course, if we're going to have evening practices, even early morning practices, we're going to need lights. Um, we're one of the few districts that don't have a lighted football field, which is unbelievable. Uh, but. Uh, so we, we, we would need to add lights there. Of course, we still, uh, there are things that, as we have gone through the budgeting process with NAPLES, there are things that we're looking at. The O'Loughlin HVAC was originally in our, what we <coughs> consider our best HVAC system, other than what had been done prior to the bond with middle school and Roosevelt. 
and so uh, we would we're, we're wanting to uh, move on the O'Loughlin HVAC. Uh, there's two phases that we're proposing. Uh, the first phase, and I, if you want to get details, we can give you details, but right now I'll just say for the first part of it, just some HVAC upgrades. Uh, that will be phase one. Of course, the Wilson project for the HVAC, um, we've talked about that. The board has already approved that, um, but this would be some consideration in terms of uh, some, some dollars and capital dollars, how we're going to pay for that. Um, and then, of course, we did, as if you're familiar with our, our uh, bus farm transportation, uh, we have uh, we, the inside of our uh, bullpen is, is now <coughs> concreted, but we have put some mellings on the south south side of the transportation office that provides um, a really nice area that will uh, fill in. We're wanting to eventually fence that and put in some, uh, this is a recommendation to add some um, shelter places for, because we're planning to now start parking our, the uh, district vehicles, not the buses, over there on that south lot uh, that will be accessed for staff to use as they, as when they come pick up a vehicle, not necessarily bus drivers. The cars, Suburbans? Cars, Suburbans, yeah, all that. We're looking to, to hopefully shelter. Um, I don't know if we'll, get, if we'll be able to shelter all the vehicles, but if we can get a majority of them under shelter, it sure pro, uh, provides them um, for all the elements that they deal with. You know, heat, storms, and hot, yeah, you name it, cold, yeah. you name it. Hail so, that goes a yeah. years ago. So that's where we would like to um, proceed with capital projects um, for, for this year. If you want to move over to the next column. Well, that's just right. what, yeah, real quick. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can see in this first column that, you know, 8.225, that's a bigger number than our regular capital. That's bigger yeah. than so what we have. If you listen so, to Chris, we spent three and a half million. Is what okay. We're out we have six and a half. So, so the balance of this expected outlay is because we didn't get to the five or six over the last couple of years. Is that what you're saying? Go or if you want to do that, or you want to jump over? Or is it future? Okay. Is it future yeah, that we're? Right now. So, okay. Yeah. Let me jump over. So, because that number is bigger, right? And it's stuff that, like the the turf field and the the lights. We know we're going to have to do that. We don't, we don't really have much of a choice. Uh, there's there's really two options when you look at it. We either in this this scenario right here, so the kind of orangey orangish scenario, we take the resources we have available and we say, okay, we're going to do Wilson. We've already approved that, mm -hmm. right? And we're just going to do the turf only. Didn't get, I mean, we, we still that wouldn't need light. But as you can see, then our ending cash balance in 23 is going to be down to about 400,000 ish. And then if we do lights and that first phase of O'Loughlin, and actually we, we probably would end up having to cut that first phases of O'Loughlin into two separate phases, so it becomes a three-year, three-phase thing instead of a two-phase process, which would still it could still time up because that the last phase of it is to tie in when the building gets the addition to put it all together. But anyway, to do that, then you're looking at, at probably 275000 in carryover in your capital outlay fund. So what what we're proposing is this, this lighter greeny color, I guess, instead. If we look at, because we've got some lease purchases coming off, if we look at doing a lease purchase for most of those things in, in this year's column, so we do the turf, we do the lights, we do that first phase of the Laughlin, and then we roll in the uh, HVAC for Wilson also that was already approved. Mm -hmm. We roll those into one lease purchase, then that that still leaves us room in our capital outlay fund to have a nice healthy carryover with the rest of the bond upcoming and other projects that are going to come into play, like doing that the bus barn or mm -hmm. buses or whatever we need to do. So so. So it takes that it takes that eight million this year, rolls most of that into a lease purchase that that will go out and seek financing, see what be able to bring back to you what the financing might look like, uh, but then be able to protect your cash balances in uh, capital outlay also. Okay. So yeah, that's that you you were on it. Uh, 
we're, we were eventually going to talk about that. But it's, it's, I'm glad we got that. Uh, so you kind of know what we're thinking. And when you when you look at like the next couple couple yeah, of years, they're significant and they get it. smaller. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's if you can use this example of things of when you when you build a new house, yeah. think of in terms of we're building a new house. There's a lot of things sometimes that you do when you build a new house that you want to do. You might want to buy a new furniture. You might want to buy, you know, certain things. We put our house. clients on the yeah. Home Depot so credit card and our, paid it off after a while. Our costs yeah. are, are up front. It's mm -hmm. just part of the way we're, we're, yeah. where we're at. Uh, but as we move on, we're going to be in a really good situation based mm -hmm. upon what we've been able to do with the bond in terms yeah. of and also maybe get some of these things taken care of. So do, okay, so that was the same question. So do we have what you're calling a lease purchase? Is that a bank loan to me? Yes. yes. For the district, you call it a lease purchase. I understand that. Right. Okay. So, I, I got, so do we know what amount we're looking at? Is that in that code uh, chart? Do, yes, actually. Yeah, you do. But here's the deal. We don't technically know how much we need. Till we get bids. Yeah. Till we get bids. Mm -hmm. um, so, Yes, we, we understand that there will be a, a, an amount that we would have to add into that. And the goal is to keep a reserve for yeah. emergencies. Mm -hmm. Right. So then as you see, like as you look into FY24, the 23, 24, 24, 25, some of those, there's still some pretty big bills in there. But if you keep your cash balance up, then I think we can handle those probably with the, the resources available left in capital hours. So you're talking only a lease purchase up front the first year not we're not gonna have to have one no, the next year not constantly this, this will be no, one. don't think so yeah i don't think i'm planning on it not yeah on. this will be the one we'll ride it for a while yeah. yeah but it'll help us get ahead of uh taking care of some of these needed things well you, you have no choice with the football i mean the football yeah. field yeah. Yeah. Well, and, I, and i like how you've spread out the cost of those those pieces of the football field and the and the stadium yeah, uh, because we, did, that's we, we put a lot of thought into how we could strategically do this to keep still keep our cash balances where they're where we, we want to would like to keep them. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, my other question then: uh, Silas Hibbs came to us or came to the board. I wasn't on the board at the time, but he had those practice fields built. Are those still being used? Uh, I, I've never seen them used, but they're supposed I to be. Don't like, know about those. Were well, they used? I think at times they were they were utilized. For various oh, is that up in the is that right. is that is our new school going but back yeah, that far? It'll, it'll cover back that far. Okay. Yeah. All right. So the funds that were spent for that or that it was all donation and that was yeah. just right. um, can you explain to me we had we per, we approved the Hayes High funds for their HVAC and then I thought we transferred that over to Wilson somehow. Was that because they, they prepaid it or something and or how did that work? And we were going to move it, <coughs> shift it to Wilson's project, and then so, the Wilson project is 24 or 2.4 million yeah. on here. So the there was some equipment because of the timing, and then when they were talking about maybe flipping the existing high school that would be middle school, there was going to be some equipment that that was already purchased for that that maybe wasn't going to work, and they were looking at trying to move it over to Wilson anyway. But then they ended up not. Flipping the high school, so I'm not sure that any of that equipment is actually going to have to go back and forth. I don't remember where they left that. It's it's staying at the high school. Yeah, I think it's so. Yeah, so it wasn't it wasn't the funding on any of it. It was because of a redesign of the high school. They could use some of that at Wilson because they weren't going to need it in the high school. So that doesn't home. affect its price because no. it's new equipment. Exactly. Yeah, this is all going to be new now. So You're right. It, it was going to impact some of the cost there if we were, if we ended up doing that. The discussion that they, that they came and had, they were going to move. So that's yeah. now they're going to. Yeah. Yeah. They can that was when they were talking about changing. They were going to move all the equipment over. We were thinking at that time that possibly we would move the office area to would be the east side from the west side of the current building, but it was just too too costly. Correct. And so, so we found we, a home for the yeah, equipment. Once we determined that it wasn't really the big need to, to flip, uh, so so that important. project has moved forward, or is it? Or they have to wait until. Well, we're still, it's still, we're still, it hasn't been designed yet, but at the same time, we we were kind of pressing them um, to, to knowing that we had this this issue with equipment, and so they got, they pulled off of the current new high school for a while to do enough work and kind of work with us in terms of how 
uh, some design and once they figured out that this was going to be too costly they kind of recommended that we don't go their direction which i totally mm -hmm. agreed with so we so, more now that. so there's some usd 49 havoc equipment storage somewhere or? yeah yeah Actually, they, they placed it all like on the so it's all set on the roofs <laughs> yeah. because they bought it when before yeah. prices were going up and then rather than I got warehousing it they went ahead and set all that stuff mm -hmm. so then now Instead of this summer, they moved it to next summer because of the right. construction I got timeline and all of that. But it's there and ready to be hooked up when they redo it. Connected. This. All right. Any more questions on that? On that one. Warranties and everything still are, you yeah, know, it's just sitting we there in storage. The, the company extended the warranty uh, for a period of time. So, so there's other. Uh, the grandstand, the press box. Well, I'm gonna get into that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So on the the next piece, on the next call, the 23, 24 projects. Uh, what we're proposing is that we start looking at completing that football uh, area to to host uh, varsity competitions uh, at the high school. If you remember from the design work, that football field will but right up it's going to be an impressive place but at the same time the bond dollars did not allocate for the, uh, the actual grandstand but as we've we've come to the understanding how that's going to be situated and how we there's uh, the desire to actually host our own uh, competitions uh, at Hayes High the new Hayes High uh, these are the costs that will be associated with this we first we have to um, you know, at a home grandstand seating uh, area with a press box. Um, we'll also need to add a visitor grandstand and then also on the other, uh, at a soccer grandstand. Now, once again, these are estimates somewhat accurate, but uh, you know, we still have got into the area in terms of designing how that, but you have an approximate idea of what that, what those costs are. Is there a soft, there is a softball field in the plans for the yes mm -hmm. and that's part included, of the bond that's included in the bond no. cost yeah that's not this these are all outside of the bond. and is there turf on that too? yes it's all synthetic so, soccer field as well they're built yes in the bond money yeah. yeah okay as well as the football field right turf in is included in the bond okay. cost Okay. So basically, the ground. Yeah, just the surface. The surfaces are covered track, by the bond, and the track. And the, the, and the goes track. around the. But not the stuff that we need to go watch the games. Yeah. Right. The stuff that the kids need to do the game. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But yeah, not stuff for us to go watch them. Okay. Your, uh, <laughs> cars around the track. They call That's that. Fun. They call that one a football. You know what? <laughs> I'm mean, I've been to several. You get on board with that. <laughs> Regardless, we see this progressing through the years yeah. as, you know, in a gradual and well, measured course. This is our understanding is that our, the goal is to open new, the new Hayes High in August of 2025. So as you can see, we're, as we're lining this out, we sh if everything goes according to plan and, and all the projects are approved at the time when we, we move forward on these, uh, we'll be able to start um, all of our competitions out at Hayside uh, in August of 2025. That's the goal. I think that's excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, moving on to 24, 25. Uh, of course, once you have grandstand, you need lights to light the field. We'll talk a little bit about that. We'll need lights for the football field as well as the soccer uh, field. We'll be adding some scoreboards uh, for soccer and football. Um, there's some utility connections that are required for all this work. Uh, those are part of, part of the plan. And then of course, we've, we've thrown some things in there with uh, classroom furniture. As, as our elementaries um, are starting to do some planning for their uh, proposed move, uh, we feel like, once again, they're getting renovated. There's going to be some things that they're going to want to clean up, freshen up, and so just dedicating some, some uh, dollars towards our elementaries as well as the second phase is being planned for a lot uh, during the 24-25 uh, year and of course also i guess i'm missing the transportation we're kind of just trying to, to
to do some small projects there for our education. Uh, moving on to 25-26, uh, we're looking at adding that, that final piece, which is just basically our, our football visitors locker room, as well as a concessions area and a restroom. Now this is for visitors. As you understand, on our home side, we have, that's part of the bond. Uh, that is being done. This would be something as we build on the other side, which would be the east side, um, some area for our visitors. Um, and it, I think it just it makes for a, a nice um, you know, experience if we have those things available um, for, our, for our visitors. Um, then, of course, we're looking at, uh, as we kind of start planning for the relocation of Rockwell, a big part of Rockwell is our warehouse, our maintenance shop that provides uh, a lot of necessary stuff for us in terms of storing and, and working on equipment and those kinds of things. We'll, uh, we'll be looking at uh, possibly relocating, well, we'll need to relocate uh, our warehouse maintenance shop. We don't necessarily have a specific plan. We have some ideas in terms of where it could possibly go, but we haven't got to that point. Got some estimates there. Also, at the same time, we're also trying to uh, complete our baseball for sub varsity as well as softball. Uh, we have some cost associated. Of course, this these are fields that won't have a tremendous amount of seating. Uh, they'll, all the concessions and things can will, can be combined with the varsity field. So it's we're just basically adding fields uh, for sub varsity, but it. So it's necessary as we have varsity and sub varsity competitions in the same, it really makes it nice when, you know, they're in the same area. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're also at that time, we kind of focusing on our playgrounds, uh, anticipating that in August of 2026, all our elementaries will be, uh, you know, kind of, we'll be making the big move over to our current Hayes Middle, um, and then with the renovations at O'Loughlin and Roosevelt should be completed, but we'll try to upgrade our playgrounds, uh, dedicate some dollars there. And then, of course, going out, out to 26, 27, looking at a gym floor replacement at the current Hayes High, which would then now be Hayes Metal, uh, just trying to get that floor updated. We've heard that for a number of years. That it's just dollars that were not in the bond that we could have taken care of that. And also, we have allocated some dollars for this office to, uh, of course, as we consider the move over to Wilson, there's going to be some, some dollars that we're going to need to do, I'm sure, for some office areas that we'll need to upgrade in terms of some things that we might need. So, in a sense, this is your planning document. Of course, I always say, everything is fluid on this document. Um, things change, necessary, you know, things come up and we might have to make some adjustments, but I feel really good about what we've done to kind of line out and uh, provide a plan for the board in terms of projects that we feel like are necessary and needed in, in all these situations and something to help our district move forward. And so it's a plan and I love the five-year plan looking at it on a long term like that but things may change and uh, as we get, move into 23 through 26 all these items will be brought back to the board after yes. bids are uh, you, put out. You approve every project. You so, know, just because you're looking at it tonight doesn't mean you're approving it. You're just right. uh, looking at our planning document, and you're welcome to give feedback. Uh, but this is, these are the directions we feel like are, are important for our district to, to move forward on. So the board's really got two times they can give feedback just constantly as you build and when it's brought back after the bid for the final decision. Where are the leases at in here? They're, They're very top up there. So in that five-year planning doc, I've got the leases broken out, or, or in, including any of the buildings and grounds or the and the technology leases. Okay, I'm sorry. Can you show it up there? Because I'm on the... the the capital outlet project five years. Debt outlet. services very top. If you look at the very top, debt services. Yeah, I'm going to clean on the left column, Mr. Park. I have a question. Yeah. When you're um, doing all this, um, you know, extending for the um, other side, 
bathrooms and stuff like that is that eventually going to be for the high school or is that still going to remain for the middle school okay so say that again more i'm sorry um when you're extending the um football field and and uh oh yeah all of these projects i mean what what we have on here and so the you're you're taking care of the middle school football and soccer field right um for the future uh -huh. and then some of the other projects that are following are will be specifically for high school okay uh, later on okay sounds great okay and yourself your your jv the freshman field in the location where the varsity baseball field is i would is that we, we have a tentative spot i mean it's definitely not been set we haven't had but it'll be on that campus out there i would assume yeah there's if, actually if you look at the design it, it is very lightly sketched in there where there's consideration for that that's the spot because uh, i'm old enough to remember they were we had a tornado and there was a softball game was just about to start downtown and we had no idea where those kids were and there was a track meet going on at the same time and then they were all in the building and well the, i just think we had, the thing is having was, everyone on one campus you remember that? Is going to be uh, beneficial just for the terms of coaches trying to, you know. Uh, a freshman, freshman ball player is not driving. Yeah, yeah. it's just, it's, it, there's a lot of benefits to having everything on one campus. On the leases, um, so that's including the, what, 200 and some thousand dollars we spend for the learning, the, for the Hayes Area Children's Center, or maybe the Head Start. E -E oh, e -C -C. E -C -C. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the, so, so the, when does that drop off? What year? Is it 10 uh, years? Is it the, the, very, the very bright column, FY26, 28. FY27, 26, 27. It you says can see the ECC lease goes off in FY28. So the 27 28 school year will be the last year we're paying on that. And then Roosevelt goes off in FY30, so the 29 30 school year. So the leases for the uh, virtual school, those aren't included in this, or they are? Really no, those are rent. rent. Yes, yeah. those those are just paying for rent. Okay. Yeah. Is there plans to get that moved back to our building so that we're not paying rent? Yeah, it, it, the the plan be, will be as this building relocates to Wilson, Hayes Virtual will become part of Wilson. Okay. That's okay. What about the uh, special ed lease that we have or the Rent that we're paying. Is the, that there, are we planning on trying to move them? The we can. We can can do it. Right now, there haven't been any discussions about that. I think the thing is, what we are determining, or we've determined, it's a really great space for our uh, special ed. And one thing, I mean, ultimately, I'd love for the preschool to be back in more of a traditional school, whether it's in an elementary school or trying to figure out space at the um, ECC buildings. Um, Ultimately, right now we're going through a early childhood special ed program review as part of the co-op. We've got the protection of the and the state will that. Um, and so trying to determine what our future needs for early childhood special ed are, and then going to figure out from there what, what spaces do we need and how do those spaces fit together. So and that program, our, was that Roosevelt or Wilson or? I mean, in I, the well, past. I, I can't speculate where the space is. No, I'm just, where in the past. Oh, in the past it's been at Roosevelt, it's been at Washington Elementary. It was at ECC for a short time, um, but it was, when it was at ECC, the space was comparable to what we needed. Um, so it's been around, and that's why I was saying, like, as more space becomes available in the, in the district, I think that's an important conversation to have. Of, is that the right? Space? Is there a better space for that to be? As far as the 18 to 21 program, having it downtown has been phenomenal. And so, as far as give the opportunities available to it. Um, the, the partnership we have with Fort Hayes that helps kind of share some of that, those costs as well, that's definitely been helpful. So, um, long story short, we're always looking at making sure those are the, the best use of our dollars with the spaces we have and meeting student needs. Um, and so we'll continue to assess that every year as, as the, um, that um, rental agreement comes up. I think also, I think how this you correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the 18 to 20 year old, one year old program has really connected well with that, that preschool program in it terms has, of what, what their, their, those 
intervent those students are doing in the, those preschool classrooms. It's really kind of cool. There's Be pretty. That it's just try, try to, I would love to figure out a way that, that um, the early the early childhood special education program can be more inclusive, including more peer models, etc. So like that's that's always a, a piece to it. But, um, yeah. That's where the program review that we're going through right now is going to help identify what is what are our communities, the four communities that we serve. What are those? Communities need from an early childhood special ed point of view, but then also the, the bigger picture of how those two programs work together. So, for the inclusion, you're busing those kids back and forth to get into the, with the regular students, um, or right. not? No, we're not. They're not at all. That's, that's the concern: is that they're that the space is like we do have peer models there, but it's not enough to be considered an inclusive preschool. We do have several um, peer models in certain sections of it, but. It Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's really a good idea for those kids to be uh, in, in one location because of the stability that they need so desperately. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trying to figure out how we can support all students and as inclusive as possible, but like with the 18 to 21 year program, their inclusion is being a part of the community how involved they've been able to be in, in the community or the way they've uh, partnered with Bethesda Place, which you've got, probably got to see on the news this last week, um, the things they've done with DSWK and um, custom creations and the library, just all the things that they've been able to do have been really phenomenal and lar largely because of, well, not largely, there, there's a lot of factors that have gone into that, but I think the location of it has given them so many opportunities. So That's great. Having a great teacher that always finds those opportunities has been excellent. I mean, they've been down the hall by my, my office. That's great. Ron, as we look at this five-year outlook, uh, like you said, it'll be so nice to have all of our programs, sports, auditorium, everything out at the new high school. Uh, just for uh, sake of a working relationship, we probably need to, uh, and I, you probably have, just contact Fort Hayes and tell them thank you for working with the district. But over the next three, three to five years, we will be moving out. Uh, yeah, Beach Smith, uh, football field, all the different things, and just say thank you and uh, save those dollars. You bet. Yeah, we've, we've, we've been in contact with them, on, so they're, they're aware of what we're trying to head. So, but we do appreciate everything that Fort Hayes has done for our district yeah. over a lot of years, and they have provided uh, some, some needed uh, access to right. some really great facilities for a long time. So we are very appreciative. <laughs> Yeah. I remember doing the football games in the old press booth. <laughs> okay. That was an exciting presentation. Thank you. Both of you. All of you. It's very good. Okay. Uh, 5.2, adoption of the resolution to intend to enter into the lease agreement. You've talked about that. Uh, I don't know if there's anything yeah. else. Uh, you're just, this is the preliminary. Yeah, this is the, just the first step. This gives us the, uh, I guess, opportunity to go out and look at financing. And so by you passing this resolution, that's the first step. Of course, any time, any, if we are going to finance it through a lease purchase that will always that will come back to you and you will be your board to, to, to move forward with lease purchasing. But uh, this is just the first step. It allows us as a district to go out and, and look at financing options for a lease purchase. So I would assume that we're going to start looking at what those things cost to? Well, yeah, I mean, we have, we have some. The you, cost of you, I shouldn't, I, maybe I don't. We're just going to ask for a range some, of. We have some pretty definite costs, but I think the thing is, as we, as we definitely get into the actual approval of any kind of financing, we'll know some, some pretty definite costs. Okay. Um, okay. 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 Uh, right now at 5.2, uh, we need to have a motion to uh, move into the adoption of the resolution of intent to enter into a lease agreement. Uh, do I need to read that resolution? Can I read the motion the way that it's written out? Sure, I just go read ahead. That just like that, and then my computer's still having problems way. loading. 
I would I move to approve a resolution of the governing body of Unified School District number 489 Ellis County Kansas Hayes determining the advisability of financing the acquisition and installation of HVAC and turf lighting improvements by the execution and delivery of a lease purchase agreement okay there is a resolution and the motion second so we have a motion and a second to approve uh, the resolution over what has been explained for this year on the capital outlay any further discussion all in favor of this resolution say yes yes yes, yes. 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 all opposed say no <coughs> believe Jess that was 6-0 seems like board docs are working we'll go Okay, 5.3 KSB policy recommendations. This is the biannual uh, ones that they send out twice a year to uh, update or have any new policies. Yeah, so I think I believe you have eight, eight new policies, or I shouldn't say new, there, I think seven are revised and there's one actual new policy. Um, so if you go through that list, the, the first one, complaints of discrimination, basically, and that's just uh, complaints uh, of discrimination by staff. Uh, what they've just revised and updated the uh, policy uh, for uh, the types of discrimination that, that may be. And, and so there's some language in there, and you, you have all those. And Ron, Ron, I'm right. This is the first read. So you're going to kind of explain each one, but yeah. we'll have time to look through them. Okay. Uh, policy is non-school employment. This policy is just provides to add clarity when uh, classified employees may be granted leave for non-school employment. We do have a current policy, I believe it's G G A R <coughs> F I might be off, but it's it, it feels probably more with our it doesn't actually say certified, but I think it's intended for certified staff and employees. It's very similar to that policy. It, this just more deals with our classified. Um, the uh, next policy is just um, IDAB is, is policy about uh, provisions for regarding dropout prevention and homebound instruction. It's just some provisions and clarifications in that policy. There is a new policy, um, policy IAF, IFA. This is not necessarily one that we're revising. We don't currently have any policy. But basically, it's a policy that's recommending some clarity and guidance to staff regarding appropriate classroom displays. Um, because sometimes, uh, we, we of course, we, we, we want to have, make sure that all any classroom display is, meets the requirements of our district and, and the goals that we have set. Of course, we want to uh, give everybody free speech and First Amendment rights, but at the same time, we do have some control by the district. So this, this uh, this policy just gives some clarification. So this would be mainly bulletin boards and things around the room, not something that's maybe on the teacher's desk or yeah, so area. That, for the most part, every, teachers are really allowed to keep that's their personal space. Um, but as, as long as it does not disrupt right. learning or does not, you know, if, if it does not meet our district goals, uh, you know, our mission, vision, and core values, then that would be the only reason why we would. Uh, ask someone to remove something from this. Uh, policy JBE is truancy, and this is just um, talking more about truancy for, um, I think, really special ed students that may not, uh, they may receive special ed services uh, inside our schools, but may not, uh, you know, I don't even know, I mean, there might be situations, but sometimes it's, it's just defining that uh, truancy is also applies to special ed students who may not uh, be here full time and, and only receive services um, for part time inside of school. Uh, the next policy is policy JCE, 
And that's just, once again, a discriminant complaint. It's, it's a procedural policy just to revise uh, the procedures for complaints. And this is this would be for students. Uh, let me have the first one, I think, was for staff. Yes. GAA yep. being yep. staff. This is for students. Very similar, just cleaning up some language. The next policy is JDD. That's just some suspension and, and expulsion procedures. And basically, the big part of this policy is just making sure that um, if someone is going to appeal a discipline hearing, uh, they have to do it within 20 days uh, of that notice that they receive about their, their uh, discipline. And then once again, I think their K, policy KN is just the complaints um, policy. This is just a very standard. Uh, it's more procedural, very similar to the, the previous two. So in a sense, that's just a quick summary once again, you have um, all the red line, um, you know, actual uh, policy changes. Um, of course, if you have any questions or you need some clarification, feel free to reach out. I'll try to do my best uh, to answer if you have any specific questions. We'll be planning to bring these back in January. So if we got a question, we contact you and then you can get a hold of Bill and yeah. we can go through. Yeah. I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, the, the family nights, the LED that well, I think they eliminated they that. just took that out. Do we have, is that in our handbooks? Do we have anything about it? It's in our handbooks. So we, that's why they're on that We don't even actually have the policy in our, and they have, and K, KSB is telling us to still have it. I got that. They're recommending to But is it still part of that? Do we have family nights? Yeah. Yeah. It used to be we couldn't practice after six I, on Wednesdays and no Sundays. But I don't know if that's still the rule at the high school. I don't know. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's nothing specific in our policy that talks directly about those. It used um, to be in the collective bargaining agreement. I, I just remember. I do, I do remember that was yeah. many moves ago. We were told. I mean, we, yeah. try, we definitely try to work with um, you know, our, our, our local churches, and we try to honor the times that they they have on Wednesday evening and so we, we really try to work really hard it's not, I'm not going to say we're a hundred percent in terms of avoiding conflicts oh, yeah. but sometimes we're just forced to but for the most part we do try to honor those. and so, there's events on Sundays that have increased too that yeah just I got I get <coughs> they have increased we, we try we try but once again I, 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 I got it to, yeah. I just yeah, I don't want to free fall that we just. Right. Sure, I think we have. We have, we, we have weekly practices, yeah. you know. On. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Anything else on? And we'll bring that back to the next meeting. Okay. Let me see if my computer is. Exec session. We're having. Okay, 6.1, uh, recess into executive session. If you looked at board docs, uh, we have one highlighted. Uh, motion to go into executive session for personnel matters of non-elected personnel in order to protect the privacy uh, interests of an identifiable individual. Uh, I would request that uh, all board members and our superintendent, Ron Wilson, attend uh, uh, for a five minute break and then a 30 minute uh, uh, executive session. Do I have a motion to go into executive session? So moved. Second. So I have a motion and a second to go into executive session. We will be returning uh, to the boardroom at 918. With that, eight, no, 818. Eight, eight. Hey, it is earlier. Good, <laughs> good on, deal. Come on, Craig. Uh, a short break and then a 30 minute. About 745 to start the session. Okay, start at 745, back into general session at 815. And that clock's wrong that I'm looking at uh, with that. All, of pro all uh, in favor of the executive session say yes. 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 All against say no. We will be going into executive session. I did not include our attorney on that at that on purpose. Yeah.